Hi everyone, this is Tavila Saban and today we will be starting a new chapter in biology which is transporting humans. Now this is a very important chapter in all of our biology, so let's get started. Now our first question should be that why do we even need a transport system in our body? Now our body is extremely complicated and therefore we need a transport system so that we can deliver oxygen and nutrients and other substances to all our body cells as well as take away waste products from them and in humans or mammals we have two transport systems that is the blood system and the lymphatic system and in this video we will be starting with the blood system and we will come back to this later now blood is not just a liquid it contains a fluid where there are blood cells and platelets. The presence of these things is why blood is called a fluid. And the fluid part is known as plasma and it constitutes about 55% by volume of the entire blood and the other 45% is made up of blood cells or platelets. The blood cells are either red blood cells or white blood cells and right now we will learn more about red blood cells. Red blood cells are basically of biconcave shape, which means that the center of the cell is slightly thinner than its edge and therefore it increases the surface area to volume ratio. Now they are produced by bone marrow and their lifespan is about three to four months, that is 120 days. And when they're worn out, they're destroyed in the spleen and liver. And they are extremely small, that is 4 to 8 micrometers in diameter. So these are extremely important points, so you should note them down so that you can review them for later. The red blood cells are essentially very small packages containing the red pigment called hemoglobin, which is a special kind of protein containing iron. And this pigment enables red blood cells to transport oxygen from the lungs to all the parts of the body. So what are red blood cells made of? Red blood cells are made up of hemoglobin, which contains iron and which enables transportation of oxygen throughout the body cells. What is the function of red blood cells? The function of red blood cells is, as I already said, that it enables the transportation of oxygen with the help of hemoglobin. Now that we have finished talking about red blood cells, let's talk about white blood cells. Now white blood cells play a wider role in keeping the body healthy by fighting against diseases. So it fights against diseases and protects us from infectious diseases. And though they contain a nucleus, their normal lifespan, at least in the bloodstream, is only a few days. Unlike red blood cells, which do not contain a nucleus, however, their lifespan is about three to four months, that is 120 days. Exactly how the worn out cells, white blood cells, are removed is not exactly clear. However, some believe that they're ingested by the active white blood cells. So white blood cells are also colorless, as in the name, and they do not contain hemoglobin like red blood cells. They're irregular and can change their shape and squeeze through the walls of fine blood capillaries into the spaces among the tissue cells. Now, this entire statement may sound a little confusing to you, that is, change the shape and squeeze through the walls of blood capillaries. However, we will discuss this when we are talking about the three blood vessels, arteries, veins, and capillaries. So for now, let's just keep that point. Now, there are two main kinds of white blood cells, that is the lymphocytes and the phagocytes. Lymphocytes are produced by the lymph glands or lymph nodes, and each lymphocyte has a large rounded nucleus and a relatively small amount of non-granular cytoplasm. Lymphocytes tend to be nearly rounding shape, as you can see in the diagram, and it only shows limited movements. The phagocytes are produced by the bone marrow like the red blood cells. And they are so called because they can ingest foreign particles like bacteria. And there are two kinds of phagocytes. They are monocyte and polymorph as you can see. 
So what is a monocyte? A monocyte has a bean shaped nucleus. See carefully in the diagram. And a polymorph has a nucleus with many lobes and granular cytoplasm. So these are the differences between the two kinds of white blood cells. Now we have talked about red blood cells and white blood cells and we are left with blood platelets. Now blood platelets are not exactly true cells but they are fragments of cytoplasm from certain bone marrow cells and they play a part in the clotting of blood. So blood platelets basically reduce blood loss and it keeps the pathogens out and it forms a sort of mesh to trap the red blood cells and which eventually dries to form a scab. So when you, whenever you suffer from any injury, you can see blood platelets trying to clot the blood so that you do not suffer from blood loss. And in this video, we are going to keep it up to blood platelets. And in the next video, we will continue from the function of blood and we'll go on to blood vessels. And thank you so much for staying till the end of the video. I really hope that it was helpful. And if you think that this is useful, then do subscribe to our channel and comment as well as like this video and it will really help the algorithm. So stay tuned and stay safe. Bye.